In this tutorial, we're going to go ahead and work through a word problem that when we're done should summarize all the properties of a quadratic function. And it will give you some practice solving word problems not only using a graph, but also algebraically. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the word problem says this. It says the height of a rocket above the ground is modeled by the quadratic function h at t equals negative 4t squared plus 32t. And h at t is the height in meters t seconds after the rocket has been launched. And the question asks us to graph the quadratic function and then asks us some questions such as how long will the rocket be in the air, how high will the rocket be after three seconds, and what is the maximum height the rocket will reach. Okay, well there's a couple of different ways that we could graph this function. We could use some graphing technology um, and go ahead and get a, a plot of the uh, of the function. Or we could quite simply use some graph paper, a table of values, and uh, put in some values for t, see what we get for h, and go ahead, put some plot some points, and then join them with a smooth curve. So here's what the, the graph actually looks like if we were to use some graphing technology. And it's important to notice that we've got a couple things happening here. First, this axis here that used to be the y-axis is actually the height at time t axis. And this axis here, normally the x, well, this is the time axis. Now, all right, let's investigate this a little deeper. Here we go. At time zero, the rocket is on the ground with a height of zero. And that matches what we see in the equation because the equation, if you notice, is written in standard form. There's no brackets in it, so it's not vertex form and it's not factored form. But it's missing the constant term on the end. The constant term on the end is the y-intercept, so if it's missing, it must have been zero. And sure enough, this had a y-intercept of zero. If we look down in the graph, we can see that at eight seconds, the path of the quadratic crosses the x-axis again. So that answers our question to B, which is, how long will the rocket be in the air? Well, it's going to be in the air for a total of eight seconds. All right, well, how high will the rocket be after three seconds? Let's take a look at question C. Three seconds, if I go to the graph, there's three seconds right there. All I have to do is go up to the graph, find where it is at three seconds, and then I'll go over to the side, and it would appear that at 60 meters after three seconds is what the height of the rocket is, okay? So there's question C, answered again right from the graph. All right, question D. What is the maximum height the rocket will reach? Well, we know that with the quadratic, the maximum height is the vertex. And the vertex is located right on the axis of symmetry. Now, the axis of symmetry, or the AOS, as we can call it in a short form, is halfway between the two roots. So we have one root at zero, we have another root at eight, halfway between is four, and that means that the axis of symmetry for this parabola is right here at four. Okay, well how does that help us? Well, it helps us because we know the vertex, which is the maximum point, is right on the axis of symmetry. So I know it occurs at four seconds, that's when it reached the maximum height. The question is how high did it get? And if I sort of go over here and I eyeball it, well, it would be right about there on the axis, not quite reaching this grid line, which would be 65, but I can't really tell from the graph. I could estimate, I could guess and say it looks like about 64 or so, but just reading it from the graph, I wouldn't be able to tell. So how could we actually find out the exact value of that height? Well, we're going to go through and we're going to take a look at each one of these questions, B, C, and D, and we're going to solve it without the graph. That is, we'll try and just solve it algebraically, and that will give us the ability to get a precise answer and hopefully it will confirm some of these other answers, such as at three seconds, it was at 60, um, that the graph gave us. Okay, all right, so off we go. So we'll go ahead and we'll take a look at the second question, which is how long will the rocket be in the air? Okay, so this business of how long, and we know that we're dealing with the 
x-axis, or in this case, this is the t-axis. As soon as we know how long, well, they're talking about time. And that means that we're interested in the roots. So we want to find the roots of this equation, that is the x-intercepts, where it crosses the x-axis. Well, we know that factoring is a way for us to get the roots. So I'm going to start by writing the equation h of t equals negative 4t squared plus 32t. And what we are going to do is we are going to factor this to solve for the roots. Okay. Well, we know that our first step when we're factoring is generally to try and take out a greatest common factor. And if we look in front of the t squared term, I notice that I have a negative 4 here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to factor out that negative 4. And that leaves me with t squared. And then positive 32t divided by negative 4 is going to be negative 8t. Okay. So now I can go ahead and factor the inside of the brackets. Well, it just looks like, again, all they have in common is a t. So I can GCF again, and I get h of t equals negative 4 t and t minus 8. So when I factor t out of the first term, I'm left with t. And when I factor t out of the second term, negative 8 t, I'm left with negative 8. Now, this looks like factored form, but what might be troubling you is the fact that there's just this term here that just has a t in it. And I don't want that to trouble you because if I just rewrite this in this form, I think you'll see that then it looks like something you're familiar with. If I say this first bracket actually has a value inside and it's t minus 0, now you can see that this looks just like factored form, which is what you're used to. So now that we have factored form, we can solve for the roots. So the question is, when does t minus 0 equal 0? Well, clearly, that's when t equals 0. And for the other root, when does t minus 8 equal 0? Well, that is true when t equals 8. So if we remember our first question, which was, how long will the rocket be in the air? From our graph, we were able to tell visually that the two roots were 0 and 8. If we didn't have the graph, factoring would allow us to go ahead, pull out the roots, and then I can clearly answer, this would be in the air for 8 seconds. Okay, so that's how we solve that first question, that B, algebraically. Okay, let's take a look at question C. Question C asks us, how high will the rocket be after three seconds? Well, from our graph, we thought we were able to tell that the rocket's actually 60 meters off the ground because it looked like that graph really lined up with the grid lines quite nicely. If we aren't provided with a graph, or if when we look at the graph, we can't accurately tell exactly where that point is, then we have to solve for this algebraically. So all we're going to do is we have the h at t function all we're going to do is we're going to select 3 as our value for t, and therefore I can write h at 3 equals negative 4. Instead of t, I'm going to substitute in the value of 3 plus 32, and again substitute in the value of 3. This equals, well, negative 4, bed mass tells us to take care of brackets and exponents first. So 3 squared is 9. And multiplication here would get us, well, 3 times 30 is 90. 3 times 2 is 6. So this is 96. And our last little step is negative 4 times 9. That is negative 36 plus 96. And we are left with 60. So there is our algebraic confirmation that yes, indeed, we were right when we looked at the graph to begin with. At three seconds, this rocket was 60 meters off the ground. If we don't have a graph, however, and we just have the equation, substituting in the value will give you the accurate height of the rocket. Okay.
Last question. Part D asks us what is the maximum height the rocket will reach? Well, we know that as soon as we see the word maximum, we're dealing with the vertex. Okay, as soon as you've seen max or min, you know that you're interested in the vertex. So we thought when we had the graph that we kind of eyeballed it and we realized it was a little less than 65 when it was at the vertex and we estimated it to be about 64. Algebraically though, if we don't have a graph, um, we can actually go ahead and we can solve this. So how do we solve for the vertex algebraically? Well, there's two ways that we could do this. The first is we could complete the square. And completing the square allows us to take this function h at t equals negative 4 t squared plus 32 t and we're going to rewrite this in vertex form. Once we rewrite it in vertex form we just read it right off and we can answer the question. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so the first step in completing the square is I go ahead and I factor out the value that is in front of the t squared, that is the a value. So I'm just going to factor that negative 4 out. I'm left with t squared and negative 8t. Okay, next step. I need to take half of the negative 8 value, which is 4, and I need to square that. Okay, so 4 squared is 16. That is the value that will turn this into a perfect square. So I'm going to add 16 and immediately subtract 16. Okay, next step. Well, next step is here is the perfect square. And that can be expressed as, and what's inside? Well, it's going to be t minus whatever half of this 8 was, 4 squared. Okay, everything else stays the same for now. I've got h at t, and on the tail end, I can't forget about that negative 16. All right, last step, and then we'll have it in vertex form. I have to remove this negative 16 from the brackets. And to do that, I have to multiply it by negative 4. So in vertex form then, this equation is h at t equals, well, negative 4 times the first term, which is t minus 4 squared, and then negative 4 times negative 16 is positive 64. So this tells me, confirms, certainly, there we go. Positive 64 was the maximum height, that is the y-coordinate, the optimal value of the vertex, and that occurred at 4 seconds, because we know from here that the vertex is at 4 and 64. Okay, well, what was the other way that we could calculate the maximum height the rocket will reach? Well, simply using the axis of symmetry. We knew the roots were at 0 and 8, and that put the AOS at 4. I can then use that value of 4 and sub it in and solve for h at 4. Oh, okay. So that's negative 4 times 4 squared. I'm using 4 instead of t plus 32 times 4. Solving, well, bed mass, take care of that 4 squared first, and then here we can multiply this out, and this is 128. Well, 16 times negative 4 is negative 64 plus 128, and therefore our last line we can write is, well, the height at time 4 is equal to positive 64. 
Again, there is the AOS, and this is the optimal value. It is the max in this case, the maximum height. Okay, so there we go. We've answered all four parts. We answered them first graphically by looking at a graph of the actual quadratic. And then we went through and we solved each of the questions algebraically. And that can be done if we don't have the graph. In summary, those are the properties of a quadratic.